CQ the X, CQ the X, CQ the X. This is Havana calling. CQ the X, CQ the X, CQ the X. This is Radio Havana calling all shortwave listeners and radio amateurs. Welcome to... Unlimited, Radio Havana's weekly feature dedicated to the fascinating world of radio communication. Hola amigos radioaficionados and shortwave listeners all around the world. I'm your host here, Arnaldo Arnicolo, Radio Amateur Show 2KK, now ready to bring you item one of this show. The question, who will be the first to make a contact using a lightning scattered mode on 50 megahertz on the 6 meters band? Well, the South African Radio League said that lightning scatter is yet another VHF propagation mode and they are quite right about it. And they are quite right indeed. They also added in a press release that so far that two-way contact using lightning scatter propagation has never been tried in South Africa. Many years ago, an FM broadcasting station in Durban on the 88 to 108 megahertz FM band was heard in this London, South Africa by Tulu Sierra 2 Fox Mike during a lightning storm. Every time a lightning flash occurred from a distance from the storm in the direction of Durban, the FM signal would pop up out of the noise at full limiting and last for about 10 seconds before it faded out, indicating that the signal was coming from the highly ionized trail caused by the lightning strike. Recently, radio bursts from lightning on 144 drugs, 300 megahertz single shot by the moon, emanating from two electric traffic rounds for us, that are six CBQ, at Kundas York, were picked up by Sheriff 4 a in Bethlehem. Even though they were of very short duration, the voice of Sheriff 6 CBQ was recognizable. This suggests that brief two-way contact on the 50 megahertz should be possible on single side band or FM, or better perhaps yet using one of the highly efficient digital modes using a thunderstorm. The late afternoon thunderstorms normally experienced in the summer months around Johannesburg, South Africa, could be a wonderful testing ground for a lightning project. Of course, only big stations around the Johannesburg area will be able to participate, as all of them will be grounded in the area where the storm is affecting it. The information provided by the South African Radio Link advises to amateurs. If you are in Pretoria, then beam at the storm in the Johannesburg area and give a brief call during the lightning flash while only listening during the next flash. If you can see the lightning flash and call when you hear the static burst on the seat mode. In theory, it should be possible to make contact as far south as the city of Brooklyn time. Yes, amigos, this propagation mode, lightning strike mode, is perfectly usable as soon as the number of free electrons per cubic centimeter passes the digital value. The path of the lightning mode will provide a short little area that will reflect signal with some energy reaching to the ground at a certain distance. Using the lightning scatter mode will require coordination between stations and maybe using a long wave receiver to pick up the noise burst the static that are generated by the lightning mode. And now, item two. Cell phone networks fail not only due to hurricane fortune and floods, they are also victims of too much traffic generated by the emergency situation in progress. The cell phone systems are designed to handle a certain limited number of two-way signals. And that's the number of traffic is used to get into a certain situation. I can assure you that I don't believe you never suffer from that problem. I can keep myself on the air before, during and after the catastrophic weather event, providing to the people much needed emergency communication. Another interesting thing to do is monitoring the maritime roadway communication channels where you can pick up ships passing data about the weather that provides information to forecast a very valuable contribution by mariners. Last but not least, if you copy an emergency call, please take written notes of the data provided by the station that is making the emergency call. And do remember that during exceptional circumstances, amateur radio stations are allowed to communicate to contact stations of other communication services in order to provide much needed emergency assistance. Now, item three, more about emergency communication, a very important topic these days. I strongly recommend that you keep an emergency wire antenna ready to be deployed when needed. My favorite emergency antenna is a simple inverted cell that has the vertical part extending up to 10 meters and the horizontal part extending to at least another 10 meters. The antenna also uses a 12 meters long counterpoise that is connected to the ground of the antenna connector. 
Using a simple easy to pull up towel that extends to at least 7 meters high, you can install the inverted L in just a couple of minutes. Using a simple fine network antenna building, my emergency inverted L antenna can be made to load properly on the 80, 60, 40, 30, and 20 meter band, where emergency traffic is usually handled. The horizontal portion can be installed sloping down into a shorter map, and it will work. My tests show that this inverted air is a very flexible system, easy to set up and achieve the unit halfway by four for a single band in the frequency. For the more complex and not very good at all, having to deal with the strong wind, the classic broadband, TCFD or super terminator for the dead force. Whenever an emergency situation is in trouble, the team will want to protect the wire that amateur radio operations have begun and essential elements in many way design emergency communication hardware network. Hurricane Harvey is making line call on the Texas coastline while reported as a class 4 storm, 130 miles per hour to St. Louis, is once again an example of why the amateur radio service is so important to deal with a really catastrophic weather event as a category 4 tropical hurricane. We have one. And now, amigos, a reminder that works even when high frequency propagation conditions are very poor indeed. I'm talking about the gray line or terminator line enhancement. Catching the early morning sunlight propagation peak has become an essential part of many DSL habits. I wake up early for my early morning radio progress of fewer national network morning show, my science segment, science and technology feature, and just before going to go on the air live, I do check the propagation conditions on the short wave frequencies. And I do have friends that set the alarm clock still earlier than mine, to around 4 o'clock in the morning, maybe half hour later, just to be awake by the time. The very interesting and rewarding gray line propagation conditions are available. This event happens independently of the solar activity, and it provides a unique window to pick up here. And yes, give it a try. I recommend you give it a try to the early morning sunrise here at Windows. And then send me an email to info rhc at email.cu with your new DS plugins during the very late evening or early morning hunting for far away DS stations. Please send your signal reports and comments to info rhc at email.cu, again info rhc at email.cu, or via email to Ani Coro, Radio Havana Cuba, Havana Cuba. <laughs> Thank you, I'm sorry. Now don't forget that you can hear...